Hi everyone, my name is Afton Brizoni and I'm really excited to welcome you all back for my interview series. We took a little hiatus in December. So um, yeah, starting off fresh for 2021 and I'm here with Noreen Music, who's the founder of Organize My Space Calgary. And they provide residential home organizing services as well as productivity coaching. Now I'm super excited to be here with Noreen. I actually met her pretty recently. We both presented at the YYC Fempreneurs Leadership and Marketing Conference. And I got a, a, a firsthand taste of some of the tips that Noreen shares with her clients. So what I wanna do over the next 15 minutes is just really dig into her business and um, you know, impart some of those tips to you as well. So to kick things off, Noreen, welcome. Um, and I'd love if you could tell everybody a bit about yourself and about your business. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Afton. I'm, uh, I'm glad to be here and see you again and have this conversation uh, with you as well as your as well as your clients and your viewers. So, um, as you said, my business is Organized My Space Calgary. And uh, I started the business, uh, I guess it would be about a year and a half ago. Uh, I did spend 30 years in the corporate world in commercial real estate. And so that is where I learned all of my uh, real world battle tested uh, techniques uh, when it comes to the productivity side. And I've always lived my life in very organized ways at home as well. And um, one of the things that really inspired me to become a professional organizer was actually my mom has been chronically disorganized her whole life. And uh, when she was in her 80s, uh, so she's 86 now, in her early 80s, I actually helped her uh, get organized. And so walking through that process with her, I saw firsthand the huge impact that, you know, releasing what doesn't serve you and getting organized and, you know, the impact that that has on, on a person's life, even somebody uh, the age of my mom at 80. So uh, that is what I love to do for clients, both at home and at work. I'm all about that. Um, so you're definitely preaching to the choir. <laughs> Now, uh, as marketers and business owners, who most of the people watching today would fall into those categories. And, you know, you know this, obviously, a long career in corporate, there's tons of competing priorities. So, you know, we face that in large companies, we face that as entrepreneurs, it's, it's kind of just something that's hard to escape. So when you see people kind of dealing with competing priorities, you know, both at work and at home, what are some of the common challenges you see and why is it so crucial to address these to achieve more organization at home and greater productivity in business? That's a great question, Afton. Um, you know, what I see, the, the, the commonalities that I see with disorganization or clutter at home and at work is paper. Most families struggle with paper, especially if you have kids, there's a lot of paper that's coming into the home from their school. Um, and then the next thing would be emails. So emails for my productivity clients are the number one issue. You know, people having thousands of emails sitting in their inbox, they're not sure if they've dealt with something or if there was a deadline and they've missed it. And so email control, getting that email inbox cleaned out is a is a really big issue, uh, as well as paper. Obviously, we, you know, we're not quite a paperless society yet. Uh, I'd love for that day to come. But there's still a lot of paper that people deal with. And, and, uh, you know, they they touch the paper quite often, they, um, they shuffle it around on their desk, there's not a good flow in their office of, of paper. So those would be my top two that I would say impact both at home and at work because we also get a lot of emails at home as well so yes and I recall working in in a different job um, than than what I'm doing now but the email was just relentless and it was really overwhelming so I can certainly sympathize with everybody who who is dealing with that and can definitely understand that once that gets organized it can really help you focus on more important things 
It, absolutely, it does. And the other thing with email, especially at work, when your email inbox is overloaded, uh, I work with my clients and we get their email inbox cleaned out for one. And then we set up proper folders and actually processing folders and then reference folders. And what I impart to my clients is that your email inbox is only where new emails come to land. That is it. That is the only reason you should be looking in your emails. Many, many people actually work out of their email inbox. So their email is open all day. Every time you know that new email notification comes, it knocks you off what you're doing. It, it knocks you off track. So you're working on a project or you're trying to, you know, do your marketing, be creative. And you see this email pop up and it, it takes you, it takes you off track. And so I teach my clients to not only get everything clean and organized in their inbox and not work out of their inbox, but to process emails only one to three times a day. So you choose when you go in your email and when you look at it, whatever works for you, if that's first thing in the morning, if it's, you know, a little later in the morning, right after lunch, you know, at the end of the day, and when your email inbox is clean, it's easier to just process those last few emails, you know, those 10 or 15 or however many emails have come in since the last time. So really keeping that in email inbox at zero and just processing emails on your own time. The rest of the time you're actually with clients, doing project work, being creative, doing deep thinking, and, and turning off those email notifications so that you don't get distracted by them. So email control is a huge piece of what I, I teach clients. When you were talking about that, I was just thinking that I used to completely work out of my inbox. I have kind of weaned myself off of it, but it is tough. Um, and I, I can imagine that that would have transformative results for your clients for sure. Now, what other uh, key pieces of advice? Obviously, email is huge. We're all dealing with that. Um, is there anything else in terms of organization and productivity, you know, that you think this audience should know about to have a productive year in 2021? Uh, there's two things that I would suggest. And the first is to uh, clear the clutter in your calendar. I go through an exercise with my clients and uh, we call it the uncommitting. And so not only do we set up their calendar in blocks and time batching and we set up a smart calendar, but I have my clients really look at what is on their calendar and is everything that they're committing to either we create a filter system. So what I would suggest for uh, the folks listening is look at your calendar and think, is everything on here either serve my family does it, is it good for my business? Is it good for my health? Like whatever your top sort of three goals are in your life or your, your top three things, use those as a filter for what you say yes to and what you say no to. Everything that's on your calendar should be where when you say yes, you're like, heck yes, I want to do this. I'm excited about this. If it's a volunteer thing, if it's a, you know, an extra work project, if it's whatever it is, it needs to go through those filters because of our time is precious and so many people are so overcommitted and a lot of what is on their calendar doesn't light them on fire or it doesn't move the needle in their business or support their family or their goals in their life. So that's huge is creating those filters and really thinking about what you're committing to and that it's okay to say no. You can still be a nice person and say no. <laughs> and the other thing that I would suggest for especially busy uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, is weekly planning. This is where you could be very organized in all parts of your business. Your paperwork is organized, your calendar is good, your email box is, is, is pretty good. But if you are not being strategic on a weekly basis, 
setting your goals and priorities for the following week, laying out sort of the, the, the tasks that you need to get done, uh, matching that with your calendar. If you're not weekly planning, you're not being as strategic as you can be. And weekly planning ensures that you take those small, consistent steps towards your bigger goals, and then you get big results. Weekly planning is truly the secret sauce of highly successful people, and not a lot of people do it. Take half an hour, 45 minutes in your week. You can do it Friday morning, Friday afternoon, Monday morning, Sunday night, whatever works for your particular work and schedule, and think about the week ahead. Look at your calendar, look at your task list, identify your one to three goals and priorities for that following week, and then plan for it. Planning is everything. Plans mean absolutely nothing, but planning is everything. So I love that. Yeah. Well, I love both of those things. And actually the thought of it, it just makes me so excited. <laughs> Uncommitting to things, Yeah. Um, you know, having a plan for your week. And, and I think other people who love organization or who maybe don't feel like they're good at it, but they want to be, you know, and they want to get productive. Those are really tangible things that you can do. Um, and I mean, certainly, I think we're probably all overcommitted. So I really love how you encourage people to look at it from, you know, it's not about, like you said, it's not that you're not a nice person, but it's just, are is this adding value? And if it doesn't, do you really need to commit yourself yeah. to this? Um, and it may be, and you know, I, it may be oh, not okay. necessarily no, it may be not yet, or you know, I have this big project I'm working on, or I'm just working on, you know, pivoting my business, or I'm hiring people. So maybe it's not no, it's no right now, but it's not yet. So yeah, and even the planning would probably help with that. Because if someone knows what their priorities are for the week, they may know whether they have time to take on that extra commitment, or if, you know, if the week is full, because they've actually sat down, and they know that because they've done their planning, they'll know whether or not they could commit yeah. to something. It kind of all comes. It does. Simple. Absolutely. And, and it really makes you in control of your goals and your work and what's happening in your business. It's a powerful, powerful thing is, is to, is to do your weekly planning. And another sort of um, thing I like to, how I like to explain weekly planning is your weekly planning is like your closet. It's like your, your whole wardrobe. It's like everything on your task list, all the projects, the possibilities that you have and your daily planning is think of it as your outfit for the day. So if you think of it that way, it's like, these are all the possibilities and picking, you know, your outfits for the day. That's yeah. how I, I explain it. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, speaking of planning, um, I'd love to hear a little bit about what's next for Organize My Space Calgary, you know, over the next few months. Yeah. So um, I have a productivity mastery program, coaching program, and uh, I've got, uh, I'm full with clients in the one-to-one in -one clients in the program. And what I'm going to be doing next is actually launching my group coaching program based on the same uh, structure, the same modules, but doing it more in a live um, virtual um, group coaching format. So I'm really excited about that. So I'm working on, you know, the different marketing launch material and so on. And then at the same time, I'd like to um, uh, produce a self-study module so that I actually have a, a bit of an entry level uh, self-study for the self-starter and the person that likes, you know, is more of the do it on their own type. And then the group productivity mastery program model for the people that love the collaboration and the group vibe and the, you know, um, learning from each other, etc. And then I have the elite one to one coaching, which is really coaching curated to each person's unique needs, their business. 
So yeah, so that's kind of what's next. So I'm very excited about it because it really is a game changer. I was just on with a client this morning and, and she's near the end of the coaching program. And she said that like the, her transformation from when we first started to her being just so incredibly overwhelmed and overcommitted. And she just, she was so paralyzed by all the things she had to do and nothing was really organized, not her calendar, her tasks or anything to now she's in perfect control of her day. She just has this beautiful, calm, controlled sort of way about her. And, and it truly does add that sense of calm, but also it gives you back so much time and time, as we know, as small business owners, entrepreneurs, our time is money. And if we're spending less time on spinning our wheels and doing things that aren't efficient or productive, then we can spend more time with our clients or on, uh, you know, business practices that, that, you know, benefit our business. So, yeah. So that's kind of what's going on. And I'm super excited about being able to coach people and see the difference that it's making in their lives. Yeah, I love that. I love that, you know, you're offering things for sort of different types of personalities and really it can benefit everyone. And it just kind of depends on the way they want to engage with it. And I'd say even for my audience who's working in marketing teams and companies, like I remember when I was in those kind of roles, it just seems like everything's urgent, but you know, when everything's urgent, nothing can be urgent. So I think really getting intentional about your schedule and, and about productivity and focusing on what you need to focus on, it's, it is a game changer for sure. So I'm excited that you're going to be bringing that to more people. Yeah. And I just want to speak a little bit about what you said about urgent and important. Yeah. The other thing that I coach my clients on is Urgent is something that must get done. I mean, somebody is going to die if you don't do this or there's a, you know, there's a serious deadline. Important needs to get done well. Really differentiate between urgent and important. Is this truly urgent? Is it, is it really like there's going to be some kind of penalty or something uh, if that doesn't get done or is it important? And yes, you need to focus on it, but it needs to get done well. Yes. Important distinction for sure, because I mean, we don't want to be rushing through those important things just because someone has placed a false sense of urgency on it, which we all know can happen. <laughs> yes. Or they're, they've put it off and now they're, you know, delegating it to you at the last minute. And all of a sudden it's urgent um, when it didn't, have to be. And, and this is, yeah. you know, part of what, what I like coaching teams around is you get a group coaching environment, but they're all in the same team. Now imagine that team moving from good to great, all being on the same page and being highly productive. So um, this is really where I want to take the group coaching piece. So not only just for individuals coming together who don't know each other, but for teams as well. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Now, on that note, um, I'd love if you could share with everyone just how they can sort of learn more about your work, how they can connect with you and all of those good things before we sign Absolutely. Off. So I am on Instagram and Facebook as uh, Organize My Space Calgary. So uh, check me out there. I'm very active on social media. I post lots of great stuff. Uh, educational, inspirational, all kinds of uh, things like that. Also, uh, my website at organizemyspacecalgary.com. I have a, an incredible DIY section. I provide a ton of resources, links to different products and professional services, but also all my free guides are on there. Uh, so that is a huge resource for people for not only the home organizing uh, side, but also the productivity side. And then also on my website is my Freedom Living blog. So I love writing. I, I write a ton of blogs. There's lots of great stuff on there from, you know, productivity at the office, working from home. I have a whole work from home series where I talk about routines and setting up your workspace and all kinds of uh, great blog articles there. I really believe in giving good meaty content and sharing what I know. So uh, yeah, check out my website and, and also check me out on, on social media, Instagram and Facebook. 
Awesome. Yes. And I mean, obviously, as a content marketer, I couldn't agree more. I think that's fantastic that you have, you know, all of these ways for people to connect and to learn things. And so I definitely encourage everybody to go on social, go on Noreen's website, take advantage of those resources and, you know, everything that we've talked about here today and and have a more productive year in 2021. Um, so thank you so much, Noreen, for coming on. It was great to have you. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's nice to see your lovely smile again. <laughs> All right. Well, take care. And uh, for everybody who's watching, we'll be back in two weeks with another interview. So have a great day. Thank you. Bye.